In this video, we're going to continue with Nextcloud and now integrate a Calabra server to allow the editing of documents right in your browser. Sounds interesting? Then let's get started. So this video assumes that you've already set up both a Nextcloud server and a reverse proxy on your Unraid server. Now if you haven't set that up already then please see my previous guides here which will show you how, then set it up and come back to this guide afterwards. And also just before we start let's just talk about exactly what a Calabra server is. Now I'm sure you've all heard of Google Documents where you can edit Office documents directly in Google Drive, well this is the same sort of thing, where you can edit your documents directly in Nextcloud using Calabra, which is an online LibreOffice suite. And the great thing is, is it's all open source and it's self-hosted, and so we've got full control over everything, so we don't have to rely on the likes of Google and Microsoft. Right, so when we set up Nextcloud, we set up a subdomain that pointed to this. And this subdomain would be accessed via HTTPS and go through our reverse proxy to our Nextcloud install on our server. Now, even though our Calabra document server is accessed through Nextcloud, it also needs to have its own subdomain as well. So calabra.yourdomain.com, something like that. Because that's how Nextcloud is actually going to talk to the document server by using that URL through HTTPS. So Nextcloud has to know the URL of the document server, but also the document server has to know the URL of the Nextcloud server. And that's because the document server will only allow connections from URLs which it's familiar with. Right, so as I'm logged in Nextcloud right now, let's start here. So let's go to the top right hand corner and click onto Apps. Then if we go across to the left, we go down to Office and Text, and then in alphabetical order, we'll see Calabra Online. Click Download and Enable. Pop in your Nextcloud password. And now we can see it's enabled here. So let's go back up to the top right. And this time click Settings. And if we go across to the left and scroll down under Administration, we can see Calabra Online. And here we want to put in the URL of the document server. So HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash and then whatever subdomain you set up and I'm using collabora.reverseproxy.me and also I'm going to check use OOXML by default for new files and then click apply and you'll see it says saved so that's all the configuration we need to do on the next cloud side of things so now we'll go across to the Unraid server and install the Collabora docker container so let's go across to apps and search in community applications and we're going to use chvb's container and install that. Okay so here we are in the docker template. Now the first thing I'm going to change is the network type. Now if you've watched my previous video on setting up a reverse proxy then you know that for all the containers I wanted to go through my reverse proxy I created a custom docker network which I called ProxyNet. And because this container is going to be routed through the proxy, I'm going to choose this network type. I've made a proxy configuration file for Calabra, which you can download in the description. And this will work as is, using a custom Docker network with your reverse proxy. However, if you're not using a custom Docker network, you can still use the config file in the description, but you'll just need to change out one line. But we'll look at the configuration file later. Okay, so now let's look at the container variable domain. Now this is where we put in our Nextcloud subdomain. This isn't the subdomain that we've created for Calabra. This here tells Calabra which domain is allowed to connect to it. So because we're connecting from our Nextcloud, we tell Calabra that it's fine for that domain to connect to it. So here, I'll put in my Nextcloud subdomain, which is nextcloud.reverseproxy.me. And the format we put it is very important. It must be the same format as what you can see here. So I've got next cloud and then backslash backslash and then dot and then your domain. Well obviously that's the domain name that you've got. I'm going to put in reverse proxy and then backslash backslash again and then dot com if it's a dot com 
or the extension I've got here on this domain is .me. So just make sure your Nextcloud subdomain is just put in in the same format as what you can see here. So this tells Collabora that nextcloud.reverseproxy.me is allowed to connect to the document server. Then underneath here there's a username and password. You can set that to anything you want. I'm just going to have mine as admin and admin. And this will allow us to log into Collabora's web UI. So with the template set up, let's scroll down and click apply. So when that's finished, just click on to done. And let's go to the Docker tab. And now we can see the containers installed and running. So let's quickly go across to the web UI. Um, this is normal, saying the connection is not private, that's fine. And here's where we just put in our username and password. And here we can just see what basically the document server is doing and how many users may be online, etc. and how many documents opened. This part we can't see from Nextcloud. We can only see this from this web UI here. So let's close this page and actually let's minimize the whole web page. And what you're going to want to do is download the file in the description and then unzip it on your desktop. And this is your configuration file for your Let's Encrypt reverse Docker container. Now, like I said, if you're using the custom Docker network with the Collabora container, then this file will work as is and you won't need to edit anything. So we can copy this across into our app data folder and then the Let's Encrypt folder, Nginx, proxy configs and put the file there. So now when our reverse proxy container is restarted, it will have the configuration file available to redirect Collabora's subdomain straight through to the container. But before we do that, let's just have a quick look inside the configuration file and see the two variables that we can change should we need to. Firstly, if you're not using the custom Docker network, then you're going to need to change this here to the IP address of your Unraid server. And also the other thing to look at here is the server underscore name. This is set to collabora dot. So, so long as your subdomain is collabora dot, whatever your domain name is, this will work. But if you're using a different subdomain, then you can change that part here. Okay, so let's close this file and let's go back to our Unraid server. What we're gonna to have to do now, we're gonna to have to restart our Let's Encrypt container. And once it's restarted, let's just check the log file just to see that there aren't any errors. And we can see here at the bottom, it says server ready and everything's good. Now, if you were to see any errors here after making a change to this configuration file, then that could be due to the fact that you are using just plain notepad in Windows to make the adjustments. Now, you always must use a proper text editor to make changes to configuration files in Linux or else the line endings may not be correct and then the file just won't work. So for editing files in Windows then I'd suggest using Notepad++. For OS X myself I use TextMate and another good one that you can use is a program called Atom. Okay so just for good measure I'm going to restart the Collabora container and the Nextcloud container and now let's open Nextcloud and do a test. Okay, and so here's a Microsoft Word document that I uploaded earlier. Let's try and open that. And we can edit it fine. So now let's try inserting an image. I'll upload this one here. Okay, and that's fine. So let's just save it and then reopen the file just to check it's fine. Okay, so that's looking good. So let's close it. So now let's try creating a new document and we'll try creating a spreadsheet, I think. And it asks us to select a template, so let's just select empty and then click create. And there we have our new spreadsheet. So everything seems good. Okay, so that's it all working and set up. So I'll leave it there with you guys. Now I hope this is something that you may find useful. And if you did or you just liked the video, then please hit that like button and share the video with anyone who you think may be interested. And I just want to take a moment to give a huge thanks to all of my supporters and Patreons. It's you guys who make this possible and I really, really do appreciate it. Anyway, it's time for me to go now. Oh, and if you haven't already, then please don't forget to subscribe. Well, guys, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.